Hi folks, welcome back to Meaningful Money. Okay, I'm here at uh, Drift Reservoir and I'm standing on Drift Dam, uh, which is not an exciting structure. Uh, but I'll take you down uh, just behind where the camera is at the moment and you can see the dam itself. Uh, this is the water that I drink regularly, but hopefully after it's been cleaned up a little bit. Uh, it's a really windy day and uh, this is actually the second take of this video and in the first one a little splash came over so might be one for a gag reel one day. Last time we talked about income tax and talked about the general uh, rates and percentages. There was an awful lot of information, an awful lot of graphics, hopefully to try and explain how the different kinds of income are taxed. To try and explain that further we're going to look at a couple of examples today specifically to explain the little anomaly of uh, the starter rate band for uh, savings interest. Let me just shift across a bit and I'll bring in uh, the uh, ladder of rates from last time. Do you remember there is, there is bandings? At the bottom is the personal allowance. Then you have the starter rate band, which only applies to interest on savings. The basic rate band, the higher rate band, and the top rate band. So that's our ladder. So we're going to put a couple of examples on that. Um, so that we can explain particularly that uh, funny little starting rate. Let's take Jack. Jack is 63 years old. That's only relevant because he's under age 65 and that sets the limit of the personal allowance at the bottom. The personal allowance, remember, is the amount you can uh, receive in income without paying any tax at all. So, Jack has income. He works part-time at B&Q, presumably. Um, and he, his income is £8,500 a year. On top of that, he has interest on his savings of £1,000 a year. Both those figures are gross before tax because we're going to apply them to our ladder here and work out what the tax uh, would be. So, um, remember, income is taxed in order. It starts with your earnings. We apply the earnings first, then interest, and then dividends. So let's put Jack's earnings on the ladder. He's 8500 well, we can see that the first 6,475% of his earnings falls into the personal allowance, and it's therefore tax-free. Nil percent, zero, zip, dada, nada, whatever, right? <clears throat> On top of that, then, uh, the next, or up to the top uh, of his income, so the total is 8,500. First 6,475 is tax-free. The rest falls into the next band. But remember that starter rate band only applies to interest, not to earnings. So the top bit of his income is taxed at 20%. It falls into the basic rate band. So most of it is tax-free. The top slice there is uh, taxed at 20%, the basic rate of income tax on earnings. If we then add his interest earnings on top of that, the £1,000 he gets there, you can see that the first £415 uh, of that falls into that starter rate band and is therefore taxed at 10%. The rest falls into the full basic rate band and is taxed at 20%. So because we've applied his income in order, earnings first and then interest, and because his earnings, his uh, job income, doesn't take him past that starter rate band, some of his interest is taxed at 10%. And that's how it works. If we take another example, this is Elsie, she's also 62, and she also works at B&Q, but she does a few more hours, and her earnings are £10,000 a year. Well, if we apply that 10000 to the ladder first, you can see that that 10000 takes Elsie past the starter rate band. So she gets her personal allowance, but the rest of her earnings is, earned, is taxed at 20% again. So far, so good. But if we then she also has a thousand pounds in interest earnings if we add that to the top she pays 20 percent on all of that because her earnings have taken her through that starter rate band so that's the difference if your earnings uh oh, let me phrase that a different way you only get the benefit of that smaller 10 percent tax charge on your interest if you don't have earned income which takes you past that band if you, you know, have no uh, earned income at all and you have interest, then that will you know, be taken up by your personal allowance first and then you get the starter rate band and so on and so forth. So that's how the starter rate band works in practice. 
It only, you only get that benefit if you don't have sufficient income to take you past that band anyway. Now let's talk about dividends because dividends are a slightly uh, different case. With dividends, um, the dividend, remember, is the income you get from owning a share in a company or a fund which itself owns shares. So let's say you own shares in uh, Marks and Spencers and you receive a dividend from them. Marks and Spencers have made a profit and they decide to uh, distribute some of that profit to their shareholders. And you get a check through the post. Let's say that check is £90. £90. And you're delighted with that. You think you might uh, take the missus out for a meal. But that dividend check has, uh, is actually £100, but it's deemed that you've already paid 10% tax on it, and so you get £90. Now, you, you know, you've never received £100 total. You've never written a check to the revenue for the £10 tax. No, because Marks & Spencers have already paid corporation tax on that money, the revenue in their kindness and uh, generosity don't think you should pay twice on that money or that tax should be paid twice on that money. So they assume that you've already paid 10% tax on it, and you get it net of that. So you get 90 quid. Now, let's say you have a whole load of shares, and you get a lot of dividends. We did this at the end of the last video. All the way up to the higher rate band, tax is deemed to have been paid at 10%. Now, notice that there's no nil rate on dividends. And that is because even if you have no other income at all, and you only have dividends sort of within the personal allowance, because that 10% tax is deemed to have been paid before you get the dividend, you cannot claim it back. So there is no nil rate on dividends. So it's 10% up to the higher rate, then at the higher rate it's 32.5%, and then at the very top rate it's 42.5%. But if you're a non-taxpayer, or, and your only income is dividends, I'm afraid there's no personal allowance. You can't claim back the 10% which is deemed to have been paid. Okay, so hopefully the uh, uh, examples of uh, earned income and interest are helpful for explaining that weird little anomaly of the uh, sort of uh, starting rate uh, band. Dividends are a funny thing on their own, but hopefully together those, that explains a little bit more about how income tax works. Once we've gone through the next uh, three or so videos, national insurance, capital gains tax and inheritance tax, together the four main personal taxes, we'll look at some planning angles as to how you can legitimately reduce your tax bill from paying unnecessary tax. So from drift down on this incredibly windy day, good job I've got this uh, little microphone these days, and that my back is to the wind, I'm a pretty good windbreak. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.